coming up on Business Incorporated. Kenya inflation rate for September rises 6.91%. Rwanda and Luxembourg signed double taxation deal. Plus, World Bank provides $100 million to accelerate smart agriculture in Cameroon. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Ladi Williams. First, let's take a look at the market uh, here in Africa. The NGX is closed today for the Independence Day uh, celebration, but the market uh, ended uh, yesterday's trading session in the green up 1.59%. While the GSE in South Africa was in the red at intraday down 0.59%. Market in Egypt is uh, closed on Friday, but ended positive on Thursday, uh, up over 1%. Kenya, the index closed positive on Thursday, uh, up 0.72%. And the Middle Eastern markets are closed uh, right now, but on Thursday, sentiments were majorly positive. Abu Dhabi uh, lost almost half a percent. Meanwhile, Dubai closed in the green, up 67 basis points. Saudi Arabia and Qatar also closed in the green. And the Eurozone inflation is uh, in September rose 3.4% uh, on an annual basis, and that's the highest reading uh, since September 2008, up from 3% in August. So let's uh, get an update from Astros Pande now, uh, live in Frankfurt. Great to have you, Astros. Uh, Eurozone inflation climbed to a 13-year high of about 3.4% in September. What, what does this mean for the ECB? Well, honestly, it's not going to lose a lot of sleep over it. It's been sticking to its uh, transitory theory, saying that uh, the prices are being driven up by temporary factors, uh, such as supply chain disruptions, higher energy prices, uh, shortages of uh, shipping containers, and so on, and that prices would eventually come down to around its target of 2% uh, once the economic recovery normalizes. So really, it's not going to be too bothered about uh, the prices going up. In fact, uh, experts and analysts is to say that it's going to go higher from here given the high gas prices uh, uh, and, uh, and other prices that are going up because of those supply chain issues. Uh, but eventually, most of them agree that eventually they would be come down and it's still not a broad-based inflation. It's not affecting all the entire gamut of uh, the economy. Uh, but having said that, uh, it seems at this point in time that uh, the central bank is more worried about a, a risk of a premature time than, uh, uh, say, uh, keeping the money types wide open for far too long. So much for the ECB to do there. But, but factory activity in the Eurozone uh, slowed in September. That's uh, according to the final PMI survey. What's weighing on the industry? Well, see, some of it is to do with the fact that, see, factory activity was bound to go down a little from the, from its elevated levels uh, that we saw in July uh, as the economy normalizes, reaches its pre-pandemic levels. So that some of it is to do with that. But the industry itself is actually reeling from the supply chain disruptions that we are just talking about. Uh, they're just struggling to lay their hands on raw materials. Their suppliers are taking ages to supply, ship goods to them. Uh, it's not easy to find shipping containers. Even if you find one, it's going to be really expensive, so the costs are going up. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it's actually quite a, a terrible time. And uh, uh, there was this comment by Chris Williamson, he's like the chief business economist at the IHS market, which carries out the survey. He says that delays and shortages that are being reported are at rates not witnessed in almost a quarter of a century. And it's not showing any signs of any Im imminent improvement. So that's how bad it is. And it's also weighing on the economic recovery and also fanning uh, inflation concerns. All right, let's look at some IPO news now. Daimler is holding a virtual meeting of its shareholders to seek uh, approval for the planned spin-off and uh, IPO of its uh, truck division. Why is the company uh, spinning its own subsidiary? Well, the mantra is leaner, the better. <laughs> Uh, they want to be more nimble as they chart out a greener future, which is 
largely electric, to some extent hydrogen. So w w in doing so, they are really want to concentrate and be, nim uh, be more nimble so that they can take decisions faster. It's an uncharted territory. Uh, so most of it is to do with that. Uh, then there's also, uh, uh, like many feel that the truck division, which is the largest truck ma manufacturer in the world, its uh, true potential, the true market value is going to come out once uh, it's uh, uh, separated from this car, uh, car unit because uh, uh, the market value has largely been held back because of all the issues and problems around the car division. Uh, re you have diesel gate and also there's a lot of expenditure that has gone on electrification. So uh, investors do feel that it is going to unleash the true market value of uh, the truck division. Anyway, uh, Ash, just thanks for that update. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. All right, uh, over to the U.S. Now, stock futures are pointed to losses for the market to start October after the S&P 500 uh, notched its worst month since March 2020. Features on the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 156 points on Friday. S&P 500 futures lost 0.4%. Meanwhile, Nasdaq 100 futures uh, inched up 0.07%. Uh, now, let's uh, get a summary of the market activities for yesterday with our correspondent, Maria Bird. The U.S. stock market ended the month with the worst month of the year and ended the quarter in the red. The Nasdaq closed 0.4% down. The S&P 500 fell by 1.6%. And the Dow Jones fell by 1.2%. It is clear that the U.S. has been grappling with economic recovery. The bond yields are rising and inflation continues to increase. The U.S. debt ceiling is a major concern for many investors in the U.S. The Chairman Powell states that he sees that inflation will continue in the future and that the month of October we might not see much reprieve. All right, that was uh, Maria Bird there with the uh, Wall Street uh, update. Now, uh, the United Nations World Tourism Organization has been speaking on how it intends to drive tourism for inclusive growth in Nigeria. The Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Zurab uh, Pololi Kashvili, uh, says the youth are the present focus for Nigeria and Africa as a whole. He shared this during an interview with our correspondents, Ini John Mekwa. The conversation started with sustainable development in the tourism sector. Do take a listen. Talking about sustainable development, as you mentioned, uh, now it's an opportunity because of the pandemic we saw and we learned a lot of things and it's an opportunity to invest, it's an opportunity to uh, develop tourism in a sustainable way and uh, I think that all ideas we had before pandemic, now it's a time to achieve and to execute all our programs and all our plans, especially on African region and we are here, we are very happy, we are very happy to have so many important guests, high level representatives from, from the continent and we will continue this kind of meetings and we will together recover uh, tourism uh, on African continent. I think that it's a timely and very nice way that we are recovering the tourism uh, sector from Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, we are celebrating tomorrow World Tourism Day and it's happening in Africa. I want to remind um, that um, every year we are celebrating in different continents and this year it's a very symbolic year because we saw that the numbers are growing, the situation is coming uh, every month better and better and we really hope we have to be prepared for 2022 which will be absolutely different with our expectations because with vaccination um, process with the recovery of the connectivity we really hope that 2022 will be some message for everyone to back to normal reality back to normal reality in figures in numbers which is very important so with this year's theme being tourism for inclusive growth the youth the population of the youth in the world now uh, is a major one and they have to be included what's the plan or the strategy of the UNWTO to include the youth in the development of tourism. We announced several, at least two 
two competitions for uh, young generation on Africa. We started with Branding Africa, which was a challenge for them. And we asked African uh, youth what was their vision, how to promote Africa outside of the continent. We had more than 3,000 applicants, which is quite a huge number. And uh, we have to communicate more with them, and they have to know that we are the channel, and this kind, the channel is another big partner, like a television, to uh, send their voices outside of the continent, outside of their countries. The second is to support them, and we are going to help and support in education part. We have already created a quite strong platform, which is um, uh, Tourism Online Academy. We're starting to giving the uh, um, some programs uh, for uh, basic knowledge of tourism. Uh, we already issued more than 1,000 uh, scholarships uh, in, uh, on African continent. We will continue next year and we will reach, I'm sure, 3,000 uh, scholarships, which is quite impressive uh, support. And um, uh, to help all African uh, youth to deliver their ideas and find investors. This is another very important part. We are uh, accelerating and helping them to attract investors to invest more in their projects in their startups and this will be this is ongoing and on, um, ongoing process which we have to support next two, three or four years. And where is Nigeria in that plan? There is a huge future uh, uh, space and place to invest in Africa and we are encouraging all our investors. Uh, we did two uh, investment forums and both of them were in Africa first of all. Well, it was in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and last one we celebrated um, in Cabo Verde one month ago. Next year we will have first ever uh, conference in cultural tourism in Nigeria and Lagos, and we are cooperating very close with Ministry of Culture and Tourism, His Excellency Lai Mohammed, and uh, we have very interesting plans and very happy to have next to us and close to us channels like uh, an information supporter. All right, that was the UNWTO Secretary General uh, there speaking on inclusive growth. Uh, we're moving on to East Africa. Kenya's overall year-on-year -year inflation rates in September uh, rose to 6.91%, up from 6.57% uh, recorded in August. The latest data by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics attributes the increase to a rise in prices of commodities with the food and non-alcoholic beverages and transport increasing by 10.63 and 9.21% uh, respectively compared to September 2020. The month-to-month -month, uh, uh, food and non-alcoholic drinks index increased by 0.11% between August 2021 and September 2021. This is mainly attributed to an increase in prices of food, uh, some food items, which outweighed the decrease in prices of others. Central Bank of Kenya Monetary Policy Committee had uh, uh, projected a rise in inflation pressures in the year, uh, mainly driven by increases in fuel and food prices. The regulator nonetheless said that inflation is expected to remain within the target of a 7% range uh, with muted demand pressures. And Rwanda and Luxembourg have signed an agreement for the elimination of double taxation with respect to taxes on income and capital and the prevention of tax evasion and avoidance between the two countries. The double taxation avoidance agreement, which becomes effective uh, once both countries have ratified it, was initiated by Luxembourg in 2019. The first round of negotiations was held in January 2020 in Luxembourg City, and second round was held virtually from November 26 to about December uh, 2nd, 2020, and the third and last round on April 27th this year. This agreement is seen as a great and important step in the bilateral relations of both countries, uh, which will boost economic exchanges uh, between both countries. And after the break, we'll look at more stories from the African continent. That's in a moment. Just stay with us. Welcome back. Still watching Business Incorporated live on Channel Television. Well, uh, South Africa's struggling state power utility, which produces more of its uh, power by burning coal and uh, supplied more than 80% of the country's power, uh, is produced that the utility firm is looking towards diversification away from use of coal. Well, let's uh, talk to Channel TV uh, correspondent now, Brian Pagani, on uh, how this is uh, going to happen. Uh, great to have you on the show. 
Good afternoon, Larry. Nice Good to see afternoon. you. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ESCOM wants uh, billions of dollars to replace its heavily polluting coal plants with cleaner alternatives. Uh, what are the options available here? Well, ESCOM has been in debt for the past um, so many years, um, the 400 million debt, um, mainly because of the coal powered. Um, stations which they have. We just entered a rainy season at the moment, so we're going to hear ESCOM saying that their coal is wet and we're going to go into a season of load shedding again. So the alternatives at the moment are gas, um, solar and wind, which there are already 11 bidders who have bid, um, independent power producers who have bid to government to say they are able to provide those um, those alternative um, options. But at the moment, only eight have been approved, and out of those eight, there's still ongoing court cases. Um, one of the bidders saying they were not approved because the other bidder got um, government approval without bringing proper um, paperwork. You know, so at the moment, those alternative um, um, renewable energies are still in the balance with the court cases and government not approving all 11 bidders at the moment. And yeah, we have uh, the world is looking towards, uh, you know, greener uh, energy at this point. Do you think this will spur some kind of uh, innovation? Well, yes, it, it definitely will, um, because um, uh, the world's um, power uh, suppliers as well saying gas emissions have been too much. Um, we have the COP21 coming up in a few weeks' time in Glasgow, and they are saying Africa, especially sub-Saharan Africa and South Africa as a whole, uh, is one of the main gas emitters in the continent. So a convoy was here uh, this past week discussing with different ministers of, of, of South Africa, seeing how they can help um, as, as we go forward into the COP21 in a couple of weeks' time. All right. Do you have any information on the funding model for this uh, coal diversification drive? Well, at the moment, uh, President Sir Ramaphosa did an, um, address the nation um, and address the issue. He's saying that world, um, more developed nations need to help Africa. So they are um, crying out and appealing to, to developed nations, the U.S., the U.K., um, to help funding um, these these new renewable energy sources so that Africa can get out of the coal power, um, power stations. And if they're not able to get this funding, what do you think the alternative is? Well, at the moment, uh, we, it, it will take a long time for, for coal power to, to go away just like that. So we are just waiting. Hopefully the independent power producers, um, because government said most of them will start operating next year, that's 2022. So hopefully by mid next year, this, this power, independent power producers will start operating and that will help, really help um, the burden on ESCOM. And, but how is the power supply, you know, right now in the country and how is it affecting, you know, uh, manufacturers? Well, at the moment, we just entered, um, I think a couple of days back, we entered the rainy season. It's been raining today the whole day. Mm. So hopefully we're, we're not too. going to <laughs> enter any I'm telling us that their coal is wet, but it's it's imminent. It's something which will happen in the next coming days, coming weeks. And once that happens, that will definitely um, affect manufacturers because there will be no there will be no production, and that will really affect the economy, which is starting to to recover. All right, Brian Fugeni, uh right there in Johannesburg. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the program. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, like. And enjoy your weekend too. All right, uh, shares in Asia-Pacific uh, slipped in Friday trade with Japanese markets among the regions with the biggest uh, losers. Friday afternoon trade, the Nikkei 225 fell 2.31% to close at uh, 28,771 points. On the Topics Index, shed 2.16% to finish uh, the trading day at 1,986 points. Elsewhere, Australian stocks also notched uh, heavy losses with the S&P ASX 200 uh, closing 2% lower at 7,185 points. Taiwan's uh, tax plunged 2.15% on the day uh, to 16,570 points. South Korea's Kospi dipped 1.62% to close at 3,019 points. In Southeast Asia, the uh, Straits uh, Times Index in Singapore uh, declined about 1%. And global oil prices dropped on Friday on the prospect that the OPEC's, uh, OPEC Plus Supply Alliance might step up a planned increase in the output to ease supply concerns. 
With soaring gas prices spurring uh, power producers to switch from gas to oil, U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures slipped $0.05 cents to $74.98 a barrel, uh, though the uh, contract remained on track to post its sixth consecutive uh, week of gains. Brent Crude Futures fell $0.07 cents to $78.24 a barrel, was still heading for a small rise on the week, marking a fourth uh, straight week of gains. All eyes are now on a meeting of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies led by Russia. Together known as OPEC Plus on Monday, where producers will discuss whether to go beyond their existing deal to boost production by 400,000 barrels per day in November and December. And gold prices eased on Friday after rallying to a one week high above the key uh, $1,750 level in the previous session as the dollar rebounded and made the metal expensive for uh, holders of other currencies. Spot gold fell 0.1% to $1,754 uh, per ounce after rising nearly 1.8% on Thursday as the dollar index slipped. Majority of the U.S. Senate on Thursday voted to keep the government uh, fully operating at the end of this week when the new fiscal year begins. Silver fell 0.6% to $22.06 per ounce. And platinum was down 0.9% to $954 after one cent. And palladium edged up 0.1% uh, lower to $1,907. And the World Bank approved a credit from the International Development Association in the amount of $100 million to support Cameroon's efforts in promoting digital inclusion and the use of digital solutions in the agriculture sector. Project Acceleration of the Digital Transformation of Cameroon seeks specifically to support the improvement of the, of the strategic policy and regulatory environment uh, for the emergence of a vibrant, safe and inclusive digital economy. So to reduce the geographic and societal digital divides affecting primarily the rural areas and facilitate the implementation of data-driven solutions to boost innovation in the agri-sector. Uh, Projects will benefit Cameroonian residents in rural areas, including end users, public and private sectors, and the general population by improving the availability and affordability of broadband internet. Connecting public uh, buildings such as hospitals, schools, and local government offices, fostering digital entrepreneurship, and providing support for smallholder farmers and producer organizations to promote the adoption of uh, innovations developed by agri-tech startups. And that's it on Business Incorporated. Thank you for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. Bye for now.